Hello and welcome to the episode 111 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, the Beatles play their biggest concert to date, film more scenes and have the final recording for Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. But that's not all we're going to cover. Let's see. On the 21st of April 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing second residency. In 1962, instead, the Beatles, still with Pete Best, returned to perform at the Star Club in Hamburg after a day of rest, their only one in the third residency of the band in West Germany. 1963, second in the bill only to Cliff Richard and the Shadows, the Beatles performed at the New Musical Express 1962-1963 annual Paul Winner's All-Star Concert at the Empire Pool in Wembley, their biggest concert to date. Some 10,000 fans attended the evening watching the 14 acts on the stage. The Beatles hadn't actually won any of the polls, all conducted during 1962, but NME decided to include them in the bill as penultimate act on the stage thanks to their two recent number one singles. The band performed Please Please Me, From Me To You, Twist and Shout and Long Tall Sally. Further into the night, the Beatles also performed at the Pigal Club in London. For some reason, advertisement for the event had only come out on the Jewish Chronicle, and so the large majority of the audience was Jewish. On the 21st of April 1964, we get the second day of filming of the later aborted Paul McCartney solo sequence for A Hard Day's Night, again at the Jack Billings TV School of Dancing. Again, the other three Beatles enjoyed a day of rest. Moving on to 1965, more filming duties were expecting the Beatles at the Twickenham Film Studios, with the completion of the Scotland Yard scene for their second feature film, Help. In 1966, the Beatles were at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. Between 2.30 pm and 12.50 am, they recorded George Harrison's Taxman in its entirety, with 11 takes of the rhythm track and then the necessary overdubs onto the best one, take 11. By the end of the session, the only elements still missing from the version that will open Revolver were the count-in, the choir calling to Mr. Wilson and Mr. Heath, the leaders of the two main British parties at the time, a cobalt track and a guitar solo at the end of the piece, which was actually a copy of the middle eight solo. The work featured guitar, bass and drums on track 1 of the 4-track tape, lead vocals on track 2 and 3, and a guitar solo by Paul McCartney, tambourine by Ringo Starr and backing vocals by Paul and John Lennon on track 4. Finally, on this date in 1967, the Beatles returned to the Sgt. Pepper's album in Abbey Road, with a little idea completing the project to their maximum satisfaction. Since no silence had been left between the songs on the master, was there a way to leave no silence even after the end of the 42nd chord that concluded the day in the life and the album? Of course! The answer was to record something to put on the run-out groove of the LPs. People with automatic players would hear the sound for a couple of seconds, but those with all their equipment would hear the track going on and on until they manually stopped the record player. It was an idea used in the old days of Shellac Records and 78 round per minute discs, but it took a bit of work during the creation of the master disc, because several attempts had to be done to make sure that the runout groove was cut correctly with a modern machine. Anyhow, between 7 pm and 1.30 am, the Fabs recorded a two-track tape filled with all kinds of noise and audio effects and completed it with the addition of a dog whistle to announce it immediately after the end of a day in the life. Sgt. Peppers was finally complete. Jeff Emerick calculated that it had taken about 700 hours of work in the studio. Please Please Me, by contrast, 
had only required 13 hours. Before the end of the session, the band oversaw the monomix of only a northern song, syncing parts of Take 3 with Take 11 onto one completed song, and achieving the final result after 11 attempts. And this concludes this episode of What A Fab Day. If you liked the podcast so far, please consider visiting www.simonmas.com support to find ways in which you can help me to put out more music-related content. Remember that comments are very welcomed, too. Tomorrow, we'll talk about a name change. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.